Good morning and welcome to worship. If you will rise and face the cross, we'll begin worship with our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit, hold us forever that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the readings. from far away. The Lord called me before I was born, while I was in my mother's womb. He named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. He hid me. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. <coughs> and now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One, to one deeply despised and abhorred by nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves, because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, has chosen you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. i 
chapter 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corinth to those who are sanctioned in Christ Jesus called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. And be to God. saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. The next day John was again standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to him, to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. 
He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are, be to, call, you are to be called Cephas, which translated as Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Well, by now you know that John's Gospel is a little different from those other evangelists. Instead of a nativity scene, John begins his Gospel with some mystical language about God and the Word, and where Jesus and his family take center stage in those accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John the Evangelist begins with another John. There appeared a man named John, he writes. He was sent from God and came as a witness to testify to the light. And he adds, he himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Of course, the writer is speaking of John the Baptist, or the baptizer, as he's called in the original. But John the Evangelist doesn't include a nice story of Jesus being baptized either. Instead, John's Gospel seems intent on portraying John not as the baptizer, but as John the witnesser, the one who came to testify to that light. <coughs> Naturally, this John attracted some unwanted attention from the Jewish authorities, as Jesus would later. They asked if he were the Messiah, Elijah, or a prophet, and John says no, and identifies himself only as a voice crying out in the wilderness. When I worked at ABC News for a few years as a graduate student, I got onto an elevator one day, and a man I had never seen before started to talk to me, and that voice was eerily familiar. He laughed when I told him that, and I realized it wasn't the first time that someone had asked. He told me that he was the voice, he was the voice that said things like, And now, world news tonight with Peter Jennings. Sitting in for Peter tonight will be. <laughs> Needless to say, it was an odd encounter I haven't forgotten. Meeting a well-paid professional who relied on a few small vibrating muscles right here to make a living that only involved announcing the appearance of other people on the screen. Uh, a minute ago, I realized that's sort of what I'm doing now. <laughs> John the Evangelist describes John the Witness in the same disembodied way. There is no visual depiction of John as a wild man who wore coarse cloth and ate locusts, only the voice to announce, Here is the Lamb of God. There is a famous painting by one of the chronics who made a kind of industry of painting Luther and his circle. And this one shows Luther preaching. There is a huge crucifix in the center of this painting with Luther on one side and his congregation on the other, and Luther is pointing, well, there it is, to the cross. And there's another famous altarpiece that shows John the Witness standing in the same position, it's the same composition, and it happens to be the crucifixion scene. And here, John the Witness, or I'm guessing it's a vision of John, because he'd been dead for quite a while, is holding the Word of God, and he's also pointing a long, bony finger at Christ on the cross. So this painting of Luther really updates that depiction of John the Witness. Luther takes his place in that scene, standing in John's sandals, as it were, and as we do. Now we are the witnesses to the Gospel, as Luther was, and John was before him. I would like to think that Luther is reminding his flock that it is their job, as it is ours, to witness that moment of Jesus' death on the cross, to point, as John always did, to Jesus. 
Jesus was one of many in that long line of people who came to John to be baptized until that moment when Christ was revealed to John. When the Spirit descended from heaven as a dove and remained on him, John declares that he has seen and that he has testified that this is the Son of God. And when John sees Jesus again the next day, he says, look, here is the Lamb of God. And two of his disciples go off and follow Jesus. Gosh, John makes witness look so easy. I suppose our own witness would be easier if we had Jesus to point to in the flesh if he simply walked by us from time to time. But we believe that he is present among us, that he has sent the Holy Spirit to be with us, and that we are baptized in that spirit. Yet somehow witnessing to those miracles has become a too heavy burden for many of us. We are too shy. Oh, we really don't want to intrude on anyone's private beliefs, do we? Or it just seems a little pushy to talk about God. Yet there is a curious pattern in this passage. When John witnesses to Jesus, his disciples follow. And when Andrew tells his brother Peter that they have found the Messiah, Peter com comes along to meet him. <coughs> Witnessing was just not a matter of just saying that Jesus is here, but bringing those future disciples into the presence of Christ and making them aware of his presence. We witness all the time about places and products and experiences, that new Mexican restaurant, the power drill I got for Christmas, the wonderful cruise we had in our Bahamas, and our grandchildren an endless source of witness. In other words, we witness about those things we have experienced, enjoyed, and somehow endured. But do we witness to the power and the working of God in our lives? Haven't we also experienced the power and presence of Jesus Christ? The consolation he brings when we need him most, the courage he gives us, the joy that our lives in Christ brings to us. Now, in the first five verses of our Gospel, John gives us five names or descriptions of Jesus. He calls him the Lamb of God, like a sacrificial lamb, or the lamb slaughtered for the Passover, whose blood provided the salvation for Israel. John says that he takes away the sin of the world. He's the Savior. And he ranks ahead of John, the witness, because he came before him. He is eternal. And then John gives his brief account of Jesus' baptism. When John sees the dove settle down on Jesus, and a voice tells John that this man baptizes with the Holy Spirit, and John concludes the lesson for that day by declaring that he has seen and witnessed the Son of God. When John's disciples begin to follow Jesus, he asks them what they are looking for. They call him Rabbi. They were looking for a teacher. Andrew goes to his brother Simon Peter to tell him that they have found the Messiah, the Anointed One, and knowing what we know of Peter's character, that description makes sense. Peter needed more than an ordinary teacher. Yet when Jesus looked at Simon Peter, he not only identifies him as Simon, son of John, but gives him a new name, Cephas, the word for rock in the language Jesus spoke, the name that would stick with Peter. In a passage where the identity of Jesus, of John, and of the first disciples is so clearly important, when the priests, the Levites, and the Pharisees in turn ask who John is, John, who sees Jesus coming toward him and saw the scripture descend on him, says that he has seen and testified of him in verses that are absolutely full of words for seeing and looking. In John's Gospel, of course, seeing is believing, but note how closely witness follows that recognition. When John identifies Jesus, he gets results. Andrew and another of John, John's the witness's disciples go to follow Jesus, no questions asked. The second time John says, look, Andrew goes to find his brother and brings him to Jesus. 
Jesus looked at Simon, knew him, and gave him a new name, a new identity that Peter would live into. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus turned the tables and asked who men say that he is. The disciples tell him that something he's John the Baptist or one of the prophets, but when Jesus asks Peter directly, he responds, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to Peter, you are Peter, the rock, and on this rock I will build my church. The Messiah and the rock, you see, it speaks to that relationship that Peter had with Christ, and it speaks to our own as well, who he is to us, who we are in relationship to him. They first identify him as a rabbi, but come to know him as their Messiah, the son of the living God, and Peter becomes that rock. No longer an ordinary guy, the son of his father, Peter had become what God had revealed to Jesus. Who is Jesus to us? The son of God, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, a teacher, perhaps the Messiah? I think the answer to that question for each of us is how we proclaim him. We see how that witnessing is not just a function of showing or saying, look, it happens when we name him, when we tell others about him, and bring them into the presence of Christ. A few years back, there was a fashion for t-shirts and bumper stickers that asked the question, WWJD question mark. What would Jesus do? Of course, it's a nice idea to imagine how we might pattern our behavior after Jesus. But it might be better for us, since we are human beings, to ask, what would John the Witnesser do? Because John's Gospel supplies the answer. He would be that voice that points to Christ, that tells of the Savior, and how the Son of the living God had come to be one of us. He would speak of him as the Lamb of God, our Redeemer, the one who is eternal with the Father and the Spirit, the Messiah. He would tell us how the words to proclaim him arise from his revelation to us and our relationship with him. He would tell how that our witness of Christ that brings the presence of Christ to others nurtures and strengthens our own relationship with God. And he would remind us that he had seen and testified that this is the Son of God. His example is one for us. Amen. Amen.
our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. At this point, you may be seated unless you are a new member of council or an old member of council still serving. Those of you who are on the council, please come forward and we will install you for this coming calendar year. If you'll just stand in front of the altar, that would be great. Our council is actually larger than three people. <laughs> can't speak for them. The following people have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us to our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful to your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? And if you will, please say, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. People of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If you do, please say, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. I now declare you, installed as council members of this congregation, Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. And if you'll stay here through the intercessory prayers, we will depart in peace afterwards. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church. Inspire the baptized to tell your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries and these council members we install today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into the life of the Spirit. Preserve the world's waters, protect them from pollution, Support plants and animals who depend on them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways, our lakes and rivers, 
and in responding to devastating floods we have seen along the western coast. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you. Draw near to individuals and communities who are suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We especially pray for Jim, Patty, Lana, and Cindy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us bold trust in you. Even when it feels like a sharp sword or a polished arrow, give us courage to receive your call to repentance and racial justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In every time and place, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith. Strengthen us as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, merciful God. Our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I encourage you to share a side of God's peace. We are in yellow today. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
free. Receive these offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power, and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore, through Jesus our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at the end of all ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. That same night after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live in the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The light of Christ came into our world and shines in the darkness. Come now to feast at Christ's table.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen.